So a while back, <clears throat> I talked about this voice in your head, you know, uh, the one that tells you how much you suck, you know, and I called this judge, uh, this voice, the judge. Now, it's not just you. Everybody has the judge. And not only does this voice tell you that you're kind of ridiculous or you're incapable or you're just not worthy, it also judges other people. Like your boss is an idiot. Your client is ridiculous. You know, that driver is an asshole. That's a favorite. Uh, and to top it off, it judges everything around you. Like, I'll be happier when I get a girlfriend. You know, things will finally look better when I get that Maserati. If we only had that one critical voice in our heads, fighting this, fighting back at the judge would be pretty easy. It would just be us against the judge. But the judge doesn't fight fair. The judge has this crack squad of accomplice saboteurs. And one of them is the controller. This is Mental Fitness Fridays. I'm Larry McInnes, and you are awesome. So let's do a deep dive and see if you recognize this, this controlling saboteur, uh, either in yourself or someone you know. So I'm willing to bet that you know someone who you or others have thought of as a control freak, or maybe someone's called you that. That freak is the controller in your head. So who is the saboteur? Well, the controller has a strong energy and they need to control people and take charge of situations. The controller comes alive when they do the impossible and beat the odds. The controller tends to be kind of confrontational and they have a habit of pushing people a bit outside their, uh, their uh, comfort zones. And the controller likes to connect people or connect with, I'm gonna do that sentence again. The controller likes to connect with people through competition or conflict uh, instead of through some of the softer emotions. And this way of connecting uh, through conflict really turns them on, but then they're surprised when people get hurt. Now remember, like all saboteurs, the controller wants you to think that it is you who's controlling and pushing people around. The controller is not you, but it is pulling the levers in your brain. And how do I know that the controller is running your show? Because I know your greatest natural strengths. You're a confident person who knows how to take action. You're decisive and you won't take no for an answer. You want to do great things, so you challenge yourself and others around you. And you know how to do the right thing, even if it's unpopular. And you see possibilities that other people can't see, and you can direct others toward this outcome that you want, which is pretty sweet, right? Nothing wrong with any of that. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that the Controller turns your greatest strengths into your greatest weaknesses by abusing them or overusing them. The controller makes you want to control things around you. And because you're either in control or you're out of control, right? Because if you work hard enough, uh, you can get and you should control the situation so it goes your way. Plus, the way you see it, People want and need you to take control. And as far as you're concerned, you're doing them a favor. And besides that, no one tells you what to do. So this kind of mindset uh, can lead to some serious anxiety once you realize that many things in work and in life are ultimately not controllable. And it's hard to stay patient with other people's feelings and different styles of working. It can get pretty frustrating when the people you're trying to control don't follow along. And when you do successfully control people, and sometimes interpret it as crossing the line, maybe you do get the results you're looking for, but at the cost of others feeling controlled and resentful. 
And that can leave you feeling hurt and rejected, but damn it, don't you dare admit to it. Now, where is all this coming from? Well, the controller might have come from your childhood. Maybe there is this hidden fear of being controlled yourself, either by other people or life in general. And maybe you had to grow up fast, be on your own, and take charge of you know, chaotic or dangerous uh, surroundings in order to survive, you know, either physically or emotionally or both. And maybe you were hurt or rejected or betrayed at some point, and you decided you would never be that vulnerable again. Maybe. But remember also, the controller was already genetically and evolutionarily pre-wired in your brain. Those childhood conditions or events may have been the trigger that the controller needed, but the controller was going to eventually show itself anyway. Now remember, you've got these natural strengths. You're confident. You're decisive. You like to challenge yourself to do great things. You know how to do the right thing. And you can see possibilities that other people can't. The controller has turned these strengths into weaknesses. And when you try to control people, you might gain short-term control, but you're going to lose long-term influence. And it's possible to take those strengths back. And I'll get into that, how to do that, in uh, just a second. Hi, guys. I'm Larry and you are awesome. I want to share with you that I wrote an ebook and it is now officially available. It's called Become Awesome with Science. It ties everything together that I've been talking about in one tidy package. And it explains how we forgot that we're awesome, it, the ways we sabotage our best efforts to live the lives we want, and how to rediscover our true awesome selves. And this is a way to boost one's peak performance, strengthens uh, one's relationships, and improve one's mental well-being. If you'd like to uh, purchase a copy, just tap a link in my bio or go to LarryMcInnes.com and head over to the shop tab. And with that, have an awesome day. All right. So... How do you take back your strength from the controller? Well, by moving from saboteur mode to sage mode. And fortunately for us, along with these saboteurs and this judge in our head, we also have an inner wise one. This is your inner sage. The sage operates with empathy and curiosity and creativity and direction and laser-focused action. You can keep all your strengths, but just put them in the sage's hands. And here's how we're going to do it. As you're moving through life, pay attention to see if people are responding positively and connecting with you when you challenge them. And if they are, great. But be aware that this approach is not the way most people feel connected. In your relationships, intimacy requires vulnerability. And as unintuitive as this sounds, vulnerability is a strength, not a weakness. Believe it or not, vulnerability is helpful to, uh, for survival. You would be shocked at the street cred that people will give you when you show your vulnerable side. So pay attention to your own feelings and emotions. And if you do feel that need for control, redirect that controlling need to developing mastery over your own mind. Well, I'm not going to claim that this is easy, but this mental fitness is always rewarding. And with that, I will see you next week at this time on Mental Fitness Fridays.